te whānau, no mai ki te wānanga o ai. Please know that we aren't experts or doctors. We are opening up our hearts and sharing our thoughts and experiences to create a safe space to talk about sex, to support and inform our rangatahi. We encourage you to have an open mind and heart to this kaupapa. This programme contains strong language and sexual content intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion advised. You must be 18 or have parental approval to view this series. No mai tomo mai ki te whare o ai. Ai! I remember the first time I, I ever watched porn was with my boyfriend in high school. And then all of a sudden they're having sex, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Everyone was given the task of sculpting their favourite sex position. Here I am, Freddy Eagle, on the bottom. <laughs> Never have I ever had sex with multiple people at one time. Like, what do you mean? Tuia te rangi, tuia te whenua, tuia rā te tini ngero ngero ki tēnei te whare wānanga o ai. Kara kera, ai, ai, ai. Ai, ai, ai. Ai, ai, ai. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, oh, it's a bit of a show today. It's an exciting show. We're in a bit of a huru mood. <laughs> but before we get into why we're actually excited, we're going to do a bit of a key mood to warm us up, warm everyone listening up. We've got to, you know, synergize, synergize, synchronized energy. So, um, Toe Boy, I'm going to get you to explain our key mood because it's a bit of a it's a bit of a cute one. I will say, okay. it's cute. depending how you look at it, that is. <laughs> so the game is. Um, um, you hum a song that's related to baby making. Mm. So, mm. kaya koe te tikanga, o te rawaata, and the first person to guess it wins. All right, can you give us an example? You start, you start us, you start okay, us. Okay, so I'll start one. He's <laughs> <laughs> put me on the spot here, but. Da, 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 oh, I'm rolling in the deep. <laughs> See? <laughs> How is that a baby making uh, song? It's interpretive, okay? <laughs> I was just going to say. You roll around in the deep. deep. I'll roll yeah, deep yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and rolling. And rolling. And rolling. And rolling. And rolling. How are you rolling in the deep, Tahu? Can you just give us... <laughs> well, being a round person, it's easy to roll around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then... In there. <laughs> in there. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. All right. Um... I'm going to leave the door open. Bruno Mars and Yes, nice. That is. I just think that's a. Is that a for you? Leave the door open, Jerry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people can walk past and watch. And the neighbours and the windows. Yeah, true. That kinky I thought girl. it was more of like a role play, like, you know, yeah, you go and I'm angry at you. Yeah. I'm going to leave the door open and wait for them to like come in. Mm. I'm shy. Mm, I've been waiting for that one. Okay. <laughs> Doing me. it. What's your baby making song, girl? Mm, if I was to make a baby. <laughs> uh, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, we don't say about Rudolph. Oh. <laughs> what? I'm gonna leave and you up and down. down. Oh, we don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Yeah. 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 No, 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 oh my no, god. No. That was a good one. Is it because we've been singing Encanto all morning? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. we're rolling, like rolling in the deep. Because it's like rolling on Cam One. Rolling on deep. No, no, no. Stevie Girl. Okay, here we go. Riding my pony. Oh my god. And then Hawaii came. And it's it, it is very um appropriate song there. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, because I'm always baby making and stuff. <laughs> always. Um, I'm great. I actually tried this song Ooh. the other way, and I, it's actually quite good because it's got a good like um, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm or the type of rhythm that I like. Anyways, <clears throat> and it's actually a bit of a TikTok number. So, oh, Miss, the misses. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I can do this for hours. hours. Oh my god. And I've been for hours. You're in the champagne shower. Champagne shower. Yeah. 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 Champagne
this. So did oh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was in the same It's a night. little bit more intimate there. Yeah, well, hey, that's my style. Bit, that's yeah. my style. Oh, oh, I can't put it down from TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. I just go Google play slow mo. Uh, no, it's R and B. It's R and B slow. Mm. Slow R and B, and it's got a playlist already there, and it came up randomly <laughs> on the playlist. Like, Actually, Ooh, that's a good little tip. This that's how Jay found it. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, she was the sitting girl. there with the micro- with the headphones, and she's like. <laughs> and she's like, oh, listen to this shit, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're on top of each other. Yeah. 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 You're rolling in the main hours. Uh, oh, and Wama, <laughs> love that. Uh, uh, music does really help the baby making process, mm. doesn't yeah. it? Doesn't mm. it? And um, that's all That's all our conversation today. That'll be our kaupapa kōroi te rangi nei. Huro pepe! Oh. Yeah. Huro pepe. And of course, I mean, hey. We only have one matua at this table. <laughs> we have a one who has the experience of motherhood, the <laughs> gift that is <laughs> divinity. Um, Stevie girl, you're the most experienced when it comes to this kaupapa kōrero huro pepe, from conceiving to giving birth to motherhood as well. Um, tell me, when you found out you were pregnant, were you huro? Or were you oh no? Oh, no. no. <laughs> bit of both. It uh, was a little bit of hoodle and also a little bit of uno. It was hoodle and hoodle and the um uno tone. Yeah, yeah, Hudo. yeah. It was, hoodle? it was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Hoodle, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, it was a definite shock. Uh, we were definitely not trying to have a baby. Um, and you know what happens when you don't use protection? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Surprise, Shocker. surprise. Yeah, so we were we were very happy. We actually captured the moment we were actually recording it just in case we, it was positive. <laughs> we thought that we would record it anyway so that we had our reaction. Ooh. And it was just a lot of shock because I don't know about you, but Wahinema out there. If you've ever taken a pregnancy test before, mm. you know that feeling of while you're waiting for the results to come up, those are like the longest two <laughs> minutes of your life. Mm. <laughs> and then I was shocked after I've taken a few pregnancy tests in my time. Mm. And then I was shocked that for the first time ever, it said two lines came pregnant, up. Pregnant. Oh. And it said six plus weeks. Oh, so, oh my, oh my God. God. Did they tell you how long, how yeah. long yeah. you are? Yeah, yeah you can get specific wow. tests. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. And it's been a bit of a, a journey through that. We've also got Huro Pepe, the yes. show that really documents this whole process. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Because it is about Matua and especially it, it, it shares the stories of our Maori going through parenthood and that whole experience as well. Mm, so uh, when we found out we were pregnant, we were excited and nervous. And then all of a sudden, my partner Nat and I realized that there was so much to parenthood that mm. we didn't know. Mm. Like all of a sudden, there was so much that we were supposed to um, learn, so much we had to prepare. And so, of course, my first place to turn was Google. So I'm like, okay, what do I need? And I found that either there was so much information out there that it was overwhelming mm. to like sift through it all and to know what works. The second thing that I found was that most of the information out there is very American mm. um, or very like international and it was almost next to impossible to find good quality Māori information yeah. in yeah. regards to um, haputanga, whānau pepe, all of those sorts of things. So we decided that why not make a TV show mm. for <laughs> other Māori mātua out there who are taking their first steps into parenthood about what prepping for a baby looks like, what are the things that uh, you need to prepare, what are the skills you need to learn, and then also documenting the journey of different mātua out there to show the realities of this is what it's like and to also have some of those conversations about here are some of the tough, challenging things so that other mātua out there know that they're not alone, but also here are some of the beautiful and amazing things about having a pepe and here is some matauranga maori about 
about mm. having people. Oh so. yeah. I gotta make a quick little shout out to Nathaniel yes. How as well. Oh, he's been, he, you know, Nathaniel is a bit of a ball of energy, but <laughs> fatherhood has actually truly changed him for the better, I yeah. feel. And I and I actually get very proud watching the both of you handling my Ira Mutu Hawaii Te Hokai Nuku. Um and you guys have done so amazing. Thank uh, you. The growth that you guys have made and uh, and I love how you interact with baby as well and seeing those types of memories as well happen. I'm gonna throw it over here. Um Tahu boy, you're past that age now. Not that there's any pressure. I think this is completely up to you guys. Yeah. Um, and if you feel comfortable enough, what are your kind of... Um, have you spoken to Chaley about it? Because I know we're engaged. At the moment. <laughs> it's like that whole first comes marriage, yeah. then comes a house, all kind of tamariki and everything like that. So are you comfortable to share? Uh, or for Karo, you tell me more than I Papa. Well, Moku, I talk to tamariki tanga like I was so against today. Like, mm. I was like, oh, I'm never having a baby. <laughs> I'm never having kids, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I do it to my toru in I nay talk pakeke. So, um, me for caro, me for caro, kimua. And yeah, moku, kate, kate ngana in I nay. Mm. Yes, yeah, so. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, kate ngana, you can have a toru, you can have a puraka. Well, yeah, kate, kate mahi ngari, um, Pera kia te omahi kare mohe wana ki tērā um, me pehea mātou. Mm. Yeah. Ngā wā pai, um, ngā pozi pai, nā. I hear it's when the tan yeah. is upside down. Yeah, yeah and me ato nice. whakaaro au mo tōku mahi. <laughs> um, nā te mea kei runga, patu oh, ana mātou i te rori i a, I a wiki, and haere ana ki tūranga tērā wiki, pōne ki tērā wiki. Mm. So it's really hard with our lifestyle at the moment, and I'm quite enjoying how we live. Mm. And um, like uh, for us, we, we're financially going to be all right. Um, we've got far no support around us, but it's just the actually mm. slowing down but that I'm kind of kareira oku a mama what I got from that is 30s wait until <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I want to get our um because we're getting married for all of you that we've said it a thousand <laughs> times now and weddings are expensive mm. and things like that and I can only imagine how expensive babies are <laughs> yeah. And so I think, yeah, being a response, like I, I, I would prefer to take them back to my own fare that we've already bought and we've got a place for them where they're, they're going to be comfortable and we can be good role models for mm. and be present with them. Mm. Because I've noticed at the moment with my mahi, we work all day. Like after our mahi yesterday, we went back to the hotel and then we went on to the computer mm. for more hui. So, yeah, when I'm present enough or. Not quite the ideal moment at this stage. Yeah. At this, at pai tēnā, pai Engari, tēnā. Mihi mea haramai ana aya. Well, haramai. Fate. Yeah. 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 Haramai. I believe you, you'll you both be amazing, Mato, and you're, you're both adaptable as well. Mm. I know you're the both of you, and it'll be amazing. Since I can't wait to see more tamarik and have more ira mutu. <laughs> Let's actually uh, head over to our whakinga o te rangi nei. Mā wai uh, tēnei e pānui. Te one. Te one. Yeah. Um, ooh, okay. Stride into it. Uh, my partner and I have recently found out we are pregnant. We're both super stoked, but we're not. Uh, but we're not too sure how to tell our families. I've just turned nineteen. My partner's twenty-one, and they are not his biggest fan. Mm. I've always done really well in school, and I'm the oldest of my siblings. I know I can have our baby and still keep on top of my uni work, but I'm scared to tell my family. I know they'll support me and baby, but I'm not sure they'll be supportive of my partner. He's been through his fair share of mess ups and was known to be mischief and a bit of a womanizer. Mm. But I'm honestly never seen him happier. I know if my family say anything bad in front of him, he'll take it to heart and leave if they ask him to. I'm not too sure how my family will react to this, and I'm honestly really scared to tell them. I know I have to. I know I have to because they're inevitable. Inevitably, inevitably killed. Mm. Um, find out sooner or later. But I want to stay in my little bubble of happiness as long as possible before the possibility of everything turning bad. Mm. Oh, that's a good. Mm. Yeah, that's that's one. juicy. Right, inevitably, they're gonna find out if mm. they see each other regularly. Like you know, um, I've known of of who have not seen their family members and like 
avoided. Mm. It's the same thing. Stayed in lockdown mm. and haven't actually gone over to tell the whānau until ka whānau mai te pepe, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that is so, like, because, like, I just want to tell. I'm like, I'll be like, yeah. guess what? Like, you know, I want to, like, you know, tell the whānau. But for someone to keep that for so long yeah. is such a strength. Mm. Um, oh, oh, yeah, that's a tough situation because it's not only just the pregnancy, it's the relationship, judgment yeah. and everything like that. How ngā whakaaro kei te tēpū? Mm. Wow, oh, it's really ooh, te ra, motifano hoki, and because I think, like, if if the fano was kind of rational, he's a boy, and no one as a womanizer. Like he's twenty one, mm. like he's got heaps of place to grow. Mm. Um, so maybe put their faith in <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put their faith in the baby. Yeah, yeah. Tika tēnā, plenty of, and you're right. They are very young, um, 19 and 21, to yeah. my understanding. Um, and that's still of uh, quite a mature age as well, in in a sense of taiohitanga. Um, how mm. far Steve? Yeah, I think you know, regardless of whether her whānau approves of her tāne at the moment, I think it is important that she tells them potentially sooner mm. rather than later because mm. sooner at least maybe hopefully it will give them the time throughout mm. the pregnancy to kind of come to terms mm -hmm. with things and to maybe change the relationship and the way that they see her tāne. Mm. Of course, because I, I love exactly what you've said, you know, well, you know, this is us. Mm. This is what's yeah. happening. We're having a baby. Can't change it now. So I really need you guys to get on board mm. because at the end of the day, the most important thing is not your relationship with my tāne. The most important thing is um, my well-being and the well-being of our pepe. Um. So, you know, I think... I think it sounds like her whānau love her mm -hmm. and I think it sounds like her whānau would be very supportive uh, of, of her and her pepe. I think one thing that stood out to me was her saying, you know, she feels like she can keep up with her uni work. She and I would that. say as a mama with this experience, sometimes going into parenthood is you don't actually realise oh, the yes. how, yeah, you know, taumaha te hai papa, nui te hai papa o ngā matua. So I would say, you know, if you really are going to continue to do your studies, you know, to fire totohu, then you really do need as much support around you as you mm. as you can have. Mm. And I support like what system. you said by um, attacking it sooner rather than later, because mm. there's been studies and even just knowing um, through Māori that um, a mama's mental space, mm -hmm. uh, spirituality, emotionally, does have an effect on Pepe, mm. right? So the sooner you can kind of address mm. those concerns, like you were saying, mm. Aumihi, um, the sooner, of course, you can concentrate on being healthy mm. um, for yourself, but most of most importantly as well for Pepe. Well, especially um, in the situation where he, what well, she said, he will leave. Mm. So if you're not, you're not going to know if you don't ask mm. the whānau. Mm. So mm. like if, if that's exactly how it is and she's confident that he will leave, if they said, then better to find out now and then you can make yeah. your decision. Look, we're going to go to our experts in Naina, Ka Tahuri Akiki, Te Mātanga o Te Rā, we have Tawera Trindu. So we're going to whakawhiti atu ki te uru, kai kapo kapo to my understanding. Uh, yes, we're bringing kai kapo kapo on the whare. Kia ora e hoi. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Let's go straight there. Um, ko wai, koe no hea koe, and what is your mahi? Um, so I, I am a midwife um, from Taranaki, uh, Kai Pako Pako. Um, been a midwife for oh seven years, I think. Um, yeah, love it, absolutely love it. Lo love working with um, our people. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now, what what actually got you interested in moving into midwifery? Because it, it's a it's a pretty intense sector or industry, um, especially when you, we're working with Pepe um, and and of of course Matua. Uh, but what made you get into the whole mid midwifery world? Mm. I uh, so um, when I had my first um, my first baby at nineteen, um, had my um, had a relationship with my midwife, and I thought, oh, I, I could be a midwife. This is a cool job because I felt inspired and I'm um, supported by her. And then all my friends wanted to do the same, so I just thought it was a um, phase I went through. Um, come to my next baby four years later, and I felt the same. But I um, 
not long after giving birth to her, I was with my best friend who gave birth and her midwife was a Maori midwife. So mm. that that point was really significant to me and that sat, sat deep. And um, girl, she was suturing my friend she, and I was down there, I was like, Wow, it was incredible. So I think that point is what turned me and um, really um, influenced me to become a midwife. You know, one, she was Māori, and two, um, the incredible thing of things you can do, you know, getting all stuck in there. So, yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful moment. I just want to know, what's the best part to you about your job? Um, our people working with our people, coming to the marae and you see all, I just call them my babies, running around and <laughs> just knowing that, wow, you know, I, I supported the whanau and was able to be there to bring forth this beautiful, you know, tamariki. Yeah, that would be the best part. Um, can Tane become midwives? Like mid-husbands? Or Aye, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mid-men? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So traditionally, yeah, uh, so a midwife is basically, um, you know, mid midwife within, you know, between the the wife and the husband. So it's that support person. So it could be anyone. And traditionally, um, with Maori, um, it, it would have been a tohunga or a kuikui or a papa or a kuro. So absolutely, and um, there's no such thing as only uh, females can be a midwife today. So really encourage um, those, um, yeah, tiny to cool get up in their great job. Me. I it's love cool. that. I love the clarification as well. Being mid, mm -hmm. of course, there. Well, Hi. it could be wife and wife, or just being mid, the wife who's giving birth, right? Um, but one thing that you did touch on were traditional birthing, yeah. um, kind of perspectives and experiences. Because I mean, hey, we have plenty of examples of modern day practice. I think that's what's dominating mm -hmm. at this mo at this stage. But just even the knowledge around traditional birth um, techniques and experiences. Can you? kind of elaborate more on that yeah sure sure so um when i became a myth or when i gave baby gave birth to my babies i only knew one thing which was to um that we as a people buried the placenta i didn't know why i didn't know how or anything um but coming through my degree and actually um starting um kaupapa, i started to delve into what you know, more about tikanga birthing. Um, and so, yeah, you're right, we've got both contemporary birthing um, uh, tikanga today, which is probably, we all know, household um, sort of things, such as um, muka tying of the um, umbilical cord, mm. karakia, all that. But um, there is a whole heap that traditionally we had practiced. Um, but as you know, that we were oral oral people prior to mm. colonisation. So yeah. I could only imagine the immense tikanga we practised prior to colonization and that mm. had been lost through um, uh, um, all our real um, being taken and practices um, that went along with it as well as through the Tohunga Suppression Act. So from what we do know, um, basically handed down um, through Kōrero from our queer um, and so on, um, there are many um, oh, uh, like bearing of the placenta such a powerful act um, to do that, and there's so much kōrero behind that. Um, naming of the peer peer, one, actually um, developing a name and creating their whakapapa for their specific peer peer, and, you know, the fact that, you know, peer peers, their name was changed throughout time, and that or it could have been due to the event of a certain thing that happened. Um, uh, the birthing mats is, is one of them there's you know a specific one that actually came down to health and safety you know you have a birthing mat specifically um for that that wahi tapu um and then all that fluid goes out and then it gets um basically burnt or buried um so we don't spread any of the the blood um mm. Oh, what, what else? Um, kōhatu, um, for cutting of the umbilical cord. So we basically used whatever was resourced in the area. So in the deep south, there would have been an abundance of greenstone, as we know. Um, in the North Island could have been um, tuhua, which the um, volcanic rocks, um, seashells um, down in Taranaki, you know, an abundance of those shells. So we're really resourceful. So we used what was in the area. Um, Ori Ori is one of my favourite ones. So, mm. um, and that was basically developed for that peer peer um, for a certain, I guess, event that happened or a certain um, future for that peer peer. 
um, for the iwi or hapu. Um, and this is not only in Māori, but it was traditionally um, all around the world. And that it's basically a lullaby, um, what the mother spoke or sang to her pēpē. So it was, um, yeah, pretty mm. special. And it, that's actually coming back today. And if you see in my Māori midwife, the second mm. series, a lot of the pēpē, uh, I think all the pēpē had a composed ori ori. Um, mm. Super powerful, so powerful. Um, and I was lucky enough to have, um, I was filmed in one of them and um, gave birth myself on it um, because I kept missing um, the woman I cared for, kept missing me <laughs> um, birth. So I was lucky enough to be filmed on that and um, and Audi Audi was developed for my baby. So, mm. so, so powerful. Um, look, Tawira, before we let you go, um, can I please just ask um, for our first timers, for our new parents, um, what are your tips? What uh, advice would you share um, to our new parents expecting Pepe for the first time? Okay. Um, trust your, your instincts, your gut instincts, because you are the one who knows your baby more than everyone, anyone else. Okay. So trust your gut instincts. Two, sleep. Sleep mm. is so significant. So if your baby sleeping in the day, you sleep too. Don't you worry about those dishes. Don't you worry about auntie who's coming over. You know, um, another tip is um, do take on the support that people are offering. Um, you know, if you are, you know, wanting a, uh, if you're having a baby shower or anything like that, um, don't worry about a koha such as toys or anything up for kai. So good nutritious kai that you can put in the freezer. So um, sleep and nourishing kai is so important. Oh, Tawira e uh, rere nei ko ngā mihi aroha ki a koe. Uh, Mou i whakawātea mai anō i a koe ki tēnei kaupapa. Uh, I hora anō hoki e nei mātauranga, e nei mōhioranga, mm. mō mātou ngā māma. Hoi anō, you know, there's quite a lot um, that I'm sure we've learnt, but we can also shed to our listeners and to our audience. So thank you so much for finding time for us uh, here on AI. A nei rā te mihi ki a koe e hoa. Kia pai te rā, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you for joining us, Tawera. Kakitera. Kia ora. Kakite. Oh. Oh. Mm. E yeah. How do we feel? I feel a bit more comfortable yeah. about, you mm. know, the whole birthing. Good. But yeah. what I really liked about that was um, even just finding out more about traditional um, birthing techniques mm. and all of that yeah. kind of matauranga. Yeah. Look, I've heard, I, I know of stories, especially um, uh, with the pa life, you know, inga wa o mua. Um, uh, midwifery was also around for takatapu as well. Mm. Um, and then there were, then we have the likes of whare kohanga. Um, I, do, I do also know stories of um, building like ditches or trees Trenches, yes. mm. um, and wahine giving birth standing up yeah. and um, having the having the um, tapuhi uh, or midwife to kupu Māori um, below uh, waiting to catch oh. the baby. Eh? And so uh, e, e and it's the same thing um, uh, wahine hua hapu would go into the ngahere mm. um, for months just before giving birth and and for a few months after because it is quite a, there's a tapu there, in, in, in those stages and mm. in those perspectives, mindsets, it's a, a it's a very tapu phase mm. um, giving giving birth um, and of course wanting to I guess spiritually protect our pepe back then um, and things like audio Oriori as well. Mm. I do want to say Oriori weren't always like lullabies that we know it is. Mm. Like, you know, twinkle, twinkle, <laughs> little star. You know, Oriori were also um, dedicating tamariki to mm. certain gods. Yes. Um, Oriori would also speak of history. Mm. And it wasn't, and it wouldn't always just be like the beautiful history. It'll be a history of pakanga. Mm. It'll be a history of war, of um, a conflicts. Mm. Um, but so Oriori is much more deeper than just a lullaby. But I think just to give a modern day context mm. of what that kind of looked like. That's the kind of nearest reference. It was, mm. they were um, chants, right? They were chants in Motea Te dedicated to Pepe. And it's um, so your Pepe grows up being able to recite that, that they know it, their whakapapa it, from, from birth, mm. that they hear that over and over again so that they know and then can recite where they come tika. from. Yeah. Tika, me te mōhio hoki um, koe nā o mātou whakāro mm. mō tēnei kaupapa. Uh, hoi anō ka... Uh, Katino here here at Fakarongo Atsu, King Fakaro, or Tehunga Rangatahi, um, Kaiha Hoki, uh, Orato, uh, Aronga, 
ki tēnei kaupapa o rātou mōhi o ranga anō hoki uh, mō tēnei mea te pēpē. Nā reira, a nei rā e hoa mā. Rangatahi Talks, let's have a listen. Do you want to have babies in the future? Definitely. Aye, yeah. I'm not sure. As long as I have a, I want a boy first, only so that if anything happens to the younger ones, he can get in. Give everyone else a hiding. Way in the future, after I'm married, when I'm 25 and up. <laughs> Do you want to have kids? Yes, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, How many? Of course. Ooh. I mean, obviously, there's the initial point here. Oh, I freaking like three, four kids, eh? Hey? Uh, if yes, would you want to incorporate Māori tikanga throughout yours and your partner's hapu tanga and birth? Definitely. What that looks like for me um, would be karakia during labour, waiata being sung. Hare anō, kia whaita mariki. And kia au, uh, i te wā, ka hapu a hau. I'm going to be freaked out. <laughs> TBH, I'm going to be freaking out. And mate fai i te ara Māori, he whakatau i a hau anō, me te whakatau i taku tinana, me te whakatau i taku wairua, kia au nei, koera anaki te huara he āhea nei au te whai, kia puta ora mai uh, i te whakawhānau tamariki. Yeah, I mean, like, why wouldn't you? As long as you, you're sure and you know how to properly undergo those customs and mm -hmm. um, ensure that you know your safety and baby safety then I think there's no problem with doing that and I think more um, Māori people should be um, doing that and you know. What would you do if your partner told you she was pregnant? Ask if it was mine. <laughs> um, right now? Right now. Sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. No, no, that's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> uh, put me on the spot here. Um, first thing would be to have uh, a long corridor with her, and then the next people would be with my parents, I think. No, I was pretty happy when, when I found out. Um, I was pretty happy and glad for the whole family. Why ne? Ka aha koe mena ka hapu koe i tēnei wā nei. Mmm, ka hari koa katoa aho, because it's meant to be. Nice! <laughs> I would say, aroha mai pa. <laughs> aroha mai. <laughs> That's what I would say. Be all good with it, because I have, like, the whānau support. I've got a big whānau. Um, heaps of siblings, and my mum's already been trying to put it in my head, but I told her she has to wait. Like right now? I'd be so happy. Oh my god. <laughs> I think if I had a whare tangata, I'd probably have like three kids already. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, I mean, look, that's our rangatahi whakaro. And I mean, it's pretty generic, right? Mm -hmm. You know, those are the typical whakaro out there. Um, there's different ways to kind of see this. Um, and mātua tanga is such a huge responsibility. So I think outside of the pain of giving birth, it's mainly the... Tomaha tanga or the responsibility, right? Mm. That's intimidating for a lot of people because for so long you'll just be living, looking after yourself mm. or like, you know, worry about yourself. And then next minute, a whole other human being <laughs> yeah. is literally under your control and under your protection. Um, has, how's it changed your guys' relationship, you and Nat? Oh, yeah. Mm. Like, it's, uh, have one, when you have a pepe, your relationship changes completely because you have this whole other being that you have mm. to think about. Mm. And also that being is 24-7. And I think that's something that m m people don't really understand before they have a baby is that a baby is 
like Aonoa, Pōnoa, <laughs> you are a parent at two o'clock in the afternoon and you are a parent at two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Like you... It's not just all yeah, cuddles exactly. and kisses. You know, you talk about how, oh, it's so nice to have a baby running around the house. Yes, it is. But it's not nice when that baby's running around the house at yeah. two o'clock in the morning and you just want to sleep. <laughs> or, <laughs> or the next day when you want it, when, if you're hungover and your baby needs attention and you just really don't want to, you know? So mm. I, that's just, you know, one thing to have a, you know, about. Mm. But the thing is, is that it definitely does change your relationship. And, you know, we've talked about this in another episode, but ch- relationships have stages, mm. obviously. And when you have a baby, I feel like that helps you to really realize who your partner is because you see who they are in stressful moments. You see mm. who they are when you are desperate for help mm. and support, when you're tired, when you're hungry, when you uh, have got dirty dishes and seven <laughs> loads of washing that needs to be done and all you have is each other. That's, I feel like, that's a real relationship mm. maker or breaker because unfortunately, mm. you know, some couples decide that when they get to that point, that it's better off to split and mm-hmm. you know what that that's what's best for some people but I'll definitely say you know there are big changes that happen when you when you have Peppy especially because now you often won't get as much you know one-on-one time together mm-hmm. anymore yeah. so uh, in my experience it hugely affects your sex life you know obviously <laughs> this this is a sex show mm-hmm. you know your your sex life is hugely impacted one because I've just pushed a watermelon out of my ticket <laughs> you know? you got surgery <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I've had surgery so I need to you know have my time to heal yeah. you know <laughs> hey, <laughs> sorry no. little Hawaii watermelon Hawaii is yeah. a little watermelon <laughs> 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 the cutest yeah. watermelon yeah. in the world yeah. So, you know, not only have I physically got that, but also like mentally, emotionally, there's so Mm. many other things going on. But the thing that I love about being a parent in terms of my relationship with Nat is that it has made me love him so Mm. much more because Mm. I see the way that he is with our baby and it makes me love him in a way that I never thought I could, you Mm. know. I've seen the way that he's been able to step into papahood and I'm so fortunate that he has been so... um, amazing along this journey mm. where not not all parents are so you know it it creates a whole nother dynamic yeah. to your relationship that is is it's a real tester it's a real mm. tester I, i'll mm. definitely say but if you can you know put put your your baby at, at the center of it all and then also make sure you're taking care of yourselves individually and looking after each other i think it's Oh, I think beautiful. that's oh. I've made me realise maybe I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> because I love I my nieces and I love my nieces and nephews with uh-huh. all my heart. But I love to leave them out. <laughs> You are so <laughs> right, and because you know, babies are the cutest things oh. in the world, especially like fat babies. I like you know, <laughs> they're almost my weakness. I will be honest, like you know, I don't like holding babies between like one and uh, under six months, mm. and not until they can like oh, hold okay. their neck up. <laughs> I hate you know, I feel so fragile <laughs> with a baby's like got a limp neck. <laughs> 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 So I like babies that can hold their necks up, but they're like the cutest things in the world. And I think that's where we get tricked, day eh? Because yeah. Like, yeah, I bet you've seen another baby and like, oh, imagine maybe another one. Oh, 100%. You know, 100%. Kind of there are definitely times I've looked at babies and I'm like... I could do that again. (laughs) (laughs) But I will say, like, having babies really starts the next part of your life. Mm -hmm. And it helps you to become, I feel like for those who choose to have babies, it helps you to become a new person. Mm -hmm. I feel like Like, having Hawaii is the best thing that's ever happened Mm -hmm. to me, you know. And I think I feel so fortunate to have given birth to like my heart in human form oh. almost you know so. oh that was the oh. good one <laughs> i love being an auntie too now oh, <laughs> look, i'll be honest as much as it makes my heart flutter babies are the cutest things in the world they are huge mm. as none of them can responsibility they are huge mm. and a high papa nui and i think we must put uh, heavy importance in how we're nurturing our babies and the responsibility that comes with it too mm. matua tanga is like a big hiwi mm. but get out there and procreate and do it for the iwi <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.